Are you going to have a show in uh, WrestleMania? Because you had a show before, right? Of course. Or WrestleCon? Seventh, seventh year. Uh, GCW does their own thing. They have the collective. My show is no, already. No, but you have one. Yeah, it's sold out completely already. What's it called? Spring Break. Yeah, that's right. Spring Break. Because I remember the first year it did really well. Yeah, it's done well, well every year. Right. Uh, it's it's basically sold out every year, but this year it sold out pretty fast. What's your main event? Um, it's not announced yet, but Kota Ibushi's in it. So, all right. I would I I, I, I would say this. I, I'm retired. I turned down bookings left and right because it basically that my job. I don't it doesn't is it worth it for me to leave on weekends when most of the shows are. Um, you guys, I would I would come back and I would go to GC. For, for one for one show for one spot is if you have Laparka come down the ring do the ring entrance to have me come running out the, down the ramp and hit him in the back with a chair and let me get my receipt if you guys had that footage that would be the new gif right so, you know. that would be funny we'd be for having disco on the show <laughs> right I get huge heat though right right Jeez, I- W is woke now. It's a woke promotion. So is it really? Well, that's a lot of wrestlers are kind of. Here. We, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta we gotta abide by the uh, internet sometimes. There's other stuff out there, you know. But we do have uh, a large mix of people, different, you know, come from different places, and it, that's what makes GCW cool. But there is right now. It's like. The indie fans are crazy, and uh, well, yeah, you got to read the you got to read the room with the fans. A lot of the fans are, you know, they're like that. So you got to feed into that, right? Cancel me every month now, but there's nothing to cancel me over. So I just say F- you. <laughs> right. right. We're in this, dude. We're in the same boat. I just go. F- you can't cancel me. Right. And I, but, I think clash with the the other people and whatever. I, I hate politics. I'm not right. I'm not left. I hate it all. I think everyone's a creep. <laughs> I, Right. I, I did a few a few years ago. We had you on the show, and you made a comment that I thought was pretty entertaining. And we asked you, like, what what's the difference between like wrestling now and and back back in the day? And you said that there's just way more in it now. Yes. Like, do you see so like like has that changed at all, or do you still see that that kind of like you know that 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 same thing? I think I think the wrestlers are kind of uh, you know there was that year where you're you're walking on eggshells around you know you don't want to piss off the wrong person on the internet, but then you're getting ratio, whatever they call it. You're getting ratioed and then you're you're right. dig yourself out of Twitter hole, even though Twitter's not real life. But you gotta dig yourself out of that hole. But now I think the wrestlers are more open and they more don't give a f- you know. Back then they're like, ah yeah, you know. But right. there's a there's like the like things what like What does that the, mean? Uh yeah, you know. What, what what do you mean what are you talking about? Well they're not as not as uh some of the wrestlers are not as, you know, well, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, they're not as... Uh, are you unfed or no? Nothing. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that old, does look like a trap house. Go ahead. An old man with a cane walked past me as we were doing this interview, and I kind of crab clawed it into my uh, pocket. So, yeah. <laughs> and while you guys were looking, I went like this real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you seem to be on something, but um, when uh, the, no, no, I'm just kidding, just kidding, Reno. Come on, man, uh, you know the Ringside News is going to pick up a story. Joey does, fe- uh, right. Conan. Conan says that he was doing better. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. You know, we we're talking about ge- you know generational changes with wrestling in the locker room and stuff. There was an incident at GCW recently where Mike Bailey got kicked by a fan. Yeah, and you can only imagine how different that would have been 20, 30 years ago. You know, well, Mike, uh, the person not to kick is Mike Bailey. Yeah, right can kick you in your face and kill you but um that la crowd is crazy they're always uh they're always pressing buttons you know i've gotten a fist fight i i had that angle with x-pac last year in that same building and someone threw a bucket at his head and uh i just it just sent me crazy i went to the crowd and it was like uh i turned into bruiser brody for a second in japan in 86 started wailing on fans kicking them in the face <laughs> So well, that's the thing. That's one thing I kind of noticed is like the, the indie crowd. You kind of see they're like kind of like these these Twitter trolls, like in real life. You know, like like the ones that like go you know, like you said, they're they're like a, I, I saw the PWG show recently where uh, what's his name, the freaking um Garcia, yeah, right, was, was having like kick at the fans. They're, bro, they let the fans like come up right right next to the ring. Well, that's like, cool. That's that that stuff. Like I was like, that's kind of like dangerous. You know, go ahead. It's an LA thing right now. It happened. It's it's happened at PWG. The Leo Rush. They threw a beer at him and he flipped and flipped his shoulder. It's happened at W three times in that building. It's happening at XPW. Someone threw a chair at Necro Butcher's head or MAGA Butcher, whatever the f- 
you're calling him now. <laughs> uh, it's an L.A. thing. I don't know. That crowd is crazy. Bro, Drum- L.A., you got to remember, L.A. is very aggressive city because they have probably more gangs than anywhere in the United States. So it's that aggressive mentality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is an L.A. thing because San yeah. Diego is kind of laid back. There's certain sections you don't want to f- with, but San Diego as a whole is laid back. L.A. is still very aggressive. Yeah, the most aggressive cities I wrestle in are usually uh, Chicago, but th- those Chicago wrestling fans, they'll just talk their pussies. They won't do anything. And L.A., they will do something. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that gang, like I said, that gang mentality that permeates throughout that city. You know, you go to baseball game, football games, there was always a fight. They'd even come down here to San Diego to fight. Dude, you know? yes. I tried to fight me in L.A. a few months ago. He- he walked up to my gimmick table and he had like a Janela Fears Brian Last sign. Uh, Brian Last is Cornet, <laughs> uh, fucking uh, whipping boy. Right. So I saw that. Do you t- ever have heat with Cornet for him to always be attacking you, or that's just something he just uh, kind of, you know? Excuse me. We go back and forth. I actually listen to Cornet's podcast probably every day. He puts me right to sleep. <laughs> but in a good, but I get the. He's a very. He's one of the most knowledgeable pe- pe- people. You Man, can he's funny. Yeah, he's funny about professional wrestling, but he did put a debt in my wrestling career big time. And that's also my fault because I went back at him and I was one of the only people to actually with Cornette pretty bad enough to get him riled up. Like one time I, someone sent me his address and I I sent him a barbecue apron that said kiss the on it. Right. (laughs) And we would go do back and forth and then, but he, he's, I I don't know. It's, uh, let, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you a story about you and Cornette. So, you know, Cornette, like, you know, he's entertaining, but he does get kind of way too personal, his attacks on guys. Yeah. I think it's, oh, yeah. he goes, he crosses the line, right? But so me and Russo were doing a podcast one time, and like you and Cornette were arguing on Twitter. He's, you know, and stuff, everything. And Cornette was, and Vince was asking me, so what's the deal with this Joey Janela guy? Like, I said, well, like, Cornette's kind of wrong because the guy does have a pretty good skill set. You know, like, you watch him work. He's like a pretty good worker. Now he was always attacking, like he wore in shape and stuff and thing. But I was like, you did a bump, and I, I still don't know how you how you do it because I was trying to figure out like how to how to take it. Where you get shot in the turnbuckle, you hit the turnbuckle, then you kind of elevate, bounce off, and land on your back. I saw oh. you take that bump, with, and I was like, how the frick is that's like a Shawn Michaels like? But because I've never seen anybody else do that, right? And I was like, I was trying to figure out how the how the frick you did it, and I was like, explaining, yo, jo- Joey Janelle is like. I, I, the guy's an entertaining worker. Like he's got skills, you know. And if the thing that, that I saw you did recently, you got in pretty good shape. Yeah, like you were posting pictures with your, your shirt off and everything. Like, how? How? What, what? What did you do to get in shape? Uh, last summer, I was in pretty good shape, you know, eating clean and you know uh, other gimmicks. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, time to get in shape. You know, I spent most. I was in. I was like half of my twenties. I was in pretty good shape. I wouldn't say I was muscular, but I was lean. I was in shape. I, I, I did. I ate. I ate meal, and then after that roof bump happened. I just, you know, started drinking way too many craft beers, which is like drinking a loaf of bread in a can, and uh, yeah, it just uh, devolved from there. And then no one actually gave a. Shit. I was like, oh, no one gives a shit what I look like. They just want to see me jump off now. So it. Then I get the TV. I get an okay shape for the Moxie matches for the Omega matches. I get in good enough shape where it's not too bad. Then COVID happens, and then I become a sloppy mess. And, uh, you know, after that was over, when we got back to the arenas, I got motivated and uh, started working out every day and getting back in shape and uh, was getting ready to go back on TV. And, uh, you know, it didn't happen, but, you know, I'm still, I'm still, I've been, my back has been fucked up since I got from back from Japan, but I'm still in pretty decent shape for someone that hasn't worked out in two months. So I've, I did something over this past year and a half.